one of the things I want to do to develop myself as a data scientist is to catch up with new trends in data science. I want to read more data science papers specifically, but these are research papers that are usually very long, detailed, and sincerely not so fun to read sometimes. Of course, I can easily upload these documents to ChatGPT online and ask for a summary and chat with it, but I want to build a system that works locally on my computer so that I can also use this to analyze and summarize confidential documents maybe documents that I don't want to upload online about um, personal spendings my health or basically anything that I don't want to get reviewed to the internet at all and thankfully local LLM, LLMs are here to help and of course they are free in this video we will install and run LLMs locally on our computer we would explain what are rags we would also implement a rack system with vector databases to store our data and retrieve them using Olama 3.2. Then we will build a simple Streamlit app um, for a user interface. So let's get going. With Olama, we can run LLMs locally on our devices. Other popular frameworks are Llama, CPP, GPT for All, LM Studio, and you mentioned it. Remember that LLMs are built by taking huge amount of internet data and train them on huge neural networks. So what we, do, we have after this is basically a very huge zip file that represents the weights of the, all the parameters in the neural network. And as you can imagine, this file um, might be really huge depending on the amount of parameters we also have on the model. Now, with the Olama, we can reduce the memory footprint of this raw model weights and it sort of makes it more efficient for users like you and I to use the model in a much more simpler way without also huge memories and the likes. Now the step one, now we are going to go to olama.ai and I'm going to show you how this works. So olama.ai and there we have it. And then this is olama. Um, it's very, very easy to download. You can basically click download. In my case, I'm not going to click it now because I already did. And you can run, as you can see, run Llama 3.2, gamma um, on your models uh, and if you click models here you can also see for example this is uh, Meta's Llama 3.2 that goes more with 1B and 3 billion uh, models um, you also see for example Mistral here yeah? Mistral uh, by mistral.ai this is the updated version was also updated two months ago and one thing i also like about this is the fact that it also gives you the specific instructions to run this for example if you want to run this once you download olama I mean, which i'm going to uh, also show you you can basically use the instruction olama run mistral after pulling the model into your um, olama locally of course so let us um, i already downloaded this and now i'm just going to um, run this on my com on my command line and this is my command line let us make this a little bit bigger um, and then we're just going to do and now it's it's going to pull that it's it's fast because i already have it also already installed pretty installed already and you see it takes about um two gigabyte of memory and then if i want to ask it any question i can just say olama run llama 3.2 and now I can basically ask it a message. So if I want to do two plus two, what does it do? Four. If I want to ask you the very popular questions, um, how many, how many, how many hours do we have in straw? Very. And it says we have two hours. Of course, you understand the typical problem with this. And I can ask it to spell it, blah 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 blah, like that. And I can also make ask it to do very complex mathematics computation for me, like um, three five zero eight five times um, two four five zero nine seven two four five zero eight seven. And then it tells me I don't know if this is correct, but I think it should be correct. But anyways. And really, these large language models are not built to solve mathematical equations, mathematical questions. But anyway, we're just testing how this works. So, if I want now, the problem is if I ask it to solve, um, to give me a more specific um, context like problems, now it's going to struggle. If I ask it, tell me, tell me about Samson's YouTube channel. 
now he says i don't have any information about a youtube channel called samson there are many there are multiple youtubers by this name anyways yeah of course there are multiple youtubers by this name. let us give it a little more context tell me tell me um about samson afolabi's um youtube channel and let's see what he said i can't find any notable information about the youtube channel specifically associated with the person called stamsia falabi it is possible that he may not be a well-known youtuber oh my god and anyways um you could you you can see you can basically see what i'm trying to do here is in the fact that um llm struggle when they don't understand the context of what our problem is so think about maybe a known a very a little known um um database in your company or in your organization that is not known outside of the people in that organization if you try to use llms to get the question for that it's going to basically return to you um sort of i don't have a notable information about it and then that takes me to why we want to talk about um rags now rags as they are called retriever augmented generation is an ai framework for improving llm generated responses um, by um, sort of providing some ground truth to the model for external sources remember how we defined llms as um, these um, neural networks that were trained on huge internet data but we could have a situation where the information we're asking to get for us the data is not available publicly so in this case we are using rags to sort of uh, give our model um, specific context into what exactly we want to do why we want to do this is because one we can ensure that the model um, has access to the right data for it to um, explain to us exactly what we want to ask so most current data and that is reliable the second reason why we want to also build a rag sort of provide um, data to our llms is so that we can also cross check our accuracy for example, LLMs hallucinate a lot and this guy if I don't know what Samson Afolabi's YouTube channel is all about, this guy could have actually returned back to me some sort of random information and I would just take it as the truth without actually knowing and I would have been wrong. So with rags we can uh, provide specific information that might be missing um, with our LLM so and then now takes me to the next thing we want to do we want to build a RAG system with our um, LAMA 3.2 and then with the vector database we would put our PDFs which in, in this case um, it could be anything the internal knowledge known to us we're going to put that into a database and we are going to ask our LLM to retrieve um, data specifically from that database and answer our question so let us go okay. this, this is it and um, this is my vec this is my um, I'm going to be using this first first let us create um, So yeah, I'm going to be using the specific libraries. I'm going to be using the OS library. I'm going to be using the temp file library to basically create some sort of temporary file structure and directory for our documents. I'm going to be using the embed chain to build a rag. The embed chain is a uh, open source library that helps you to build rag systems. So you can specify your ML model. You can also specify your database and your embedder. And I'm going to be using the streamlit, of course, as our user interface to also um, basically show our data so yeah so sort of this is so yeah, sort of this is how our um, coding is going to go today. We will first of all configure our embed chain app. We're going to use Olama, specifically Lama 3.2. We're going to add functions to display PDFs in the Streamlit app. I'm going to create a Streamlit title and a prep 
uh, page sidebar so that we can see our PDF uploads. We're going to add our PDF now to our knowledge base for our Llama, um, for our Llama model. And we're going to set up like a chat interface, a simple one. And then we're going to display also the user query and then display responses. And then we can chat with our PDFs with our local knowledge and also the model running locally. So let us get going. So basically what we've done now, what I've done is to um, embed, now to instantiate our embed chain bot. We are specifying our LLMs, our vector database um, search, vector database where we will store our, our our PDF files. And then we're also using the embedder, which is also an Olama and the same Olama 3.2 as well. So yeah, that's done. Let's move on. So now what I'm trying to do is basically I've been able to put in a title and also specify a database part for our temp file which is now our document and now we're just going to put some sidebar what we want to do with the sidebar is to sort of have a quick PDF uh, preview of our document that we want to upload into our Streamlit app and then when we do that we can just have a quick look and then we would then move it into our database at the end of the day just to uh, make sure that everything works fine. And yeah, we are done. So now what I've just done is to, um, after creating a sidebar, we add a button where we submit our PDFs, then our system loads, loads it into this um, temp file that we already created. Already when it's done with that, it tells us, okay, now um, I've basically added this PDF file to our knowledge base. So we have an extra knowledge or context that our model can now work with. And then we can, we basically did a quick set, um, setup of the chat interface. And then with that, we can, sort of have a chat with our PDF sort of basically like I see we're talking to a friend but then our LLMs would just be going to this PDF to actually retrieve the document for us and if we need to clear the chat also it will clear the chat as well um, I need to put the requirements into I need to um, create a requirements file so that we can just get this running as well So in our requirements file, we're going to have um, Streamlit, um, of course, embed chain, the model that we're using before, we're going to have a Streamlit chat um, as well, and we're going to use the, we need to install this temp and of course, Olama. And now saved and what we would just need to do is to create an environment and then pip install our requirement file but i'm not going to be doing that in this video because i have a previous video where i shared uh, about uh, automating my life with python you should check that out and then we did a lot of the installing so i'm just going to use the environment that i already created um, that i already created for this so so now your um, environment is activated stream leads run um now the name of our file is chat pdf.py and yeah and yeah this is our stream lead app it's running okay now our our data is there our model is running as we want it to run 
now we are just going to test it by in, um, updating basically drag we will just basically loading our data files into our um, pdf upload and i'm going to test this with um, a um, data science paper about extra trees i don't know if anybody has ever about that so this is just like a um uh, a document this, uh, sorry this is just like a model that is one step ahead of the random forest and it's a very cool paper so i'm just going to load that and let me see this is the paper here i just loaded it and you can see extremely randomized trees it's a paper and then so we have our data here and then i'm just going to submit pdf and it's going to add this um database that are non new knowledge that i've just created into our database and then we can basically start chatting so added extra trees document pdf why are some generic randomization methods so basically giving me an idea of what conversation i can have already with my system and i can ask it um maybe we can also ask the same question what are some what are some generic uh what is the or maybe i can ask what is the reason what is the reason for um extremely extremely randomized uh, randomized uh, trees So what is the reason for extremely randomized trees? This is my um, this is my question. Is stringing the reason for extremely is to introduce randomness to the decision making process of a tree based classifier, thereby reducing the fitting and increasing its ability to generate as well as in it. And I can with this chart basically get to understand exactly what I need to understand about extremely randomized trees without having to completely read the paper, get summaries out of it, and also make it very interactive with each other. I can, for example, ask it. Um, um what other question can i ask it this approach is particularly useful on the i dimensional data set um what is the main idea what is the main what is the main idea behind extremely randomized trees extremely randomized trees now it's thinking it's thinking Extremely randomized trees are an ensemble learning method that combines multiple decision trees with randomization. The main idea here is to create a forecast forest of decision trees. So we've been basically been able to um, upload our file here, the knowledge base that we want to put to our LLMs, and then we can just begin to chat with our LLMs straight up with this interface and everything works. Also locally in our system, so this is very good because we don't have to upload our data to the internet with chat GPT and also have to deal with privacy issues and the like so if you have any private document you can basically upload it here and get to chat with your document and everything works seamlessly if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out this other video where i used python to automate time consuming and boring stuffs in my life check it out and i'll see you soon